Thank you very much, Shiva. Yes, myself and Fogged here, live in Singapore. The crowd, of course, already amazing as we get ready for this first series. Evil Geniuses versus Thunder Awaken. Fog, we just had the drafts. What are you excited to see from these two teams? Because so far, from group performances, they have impressed. Looks like battle ready from both sides constantly, especially from Thunder Awakens, which is what we've come to expect from them. Look how much their spam is going to be coming out in this game. Zeus. Zeus with Bloodseeker, with CM, with Tiny. I mean, this is just constant aggression. Let's see if EG's able to hold on to their game with their really stable draft they've kind of gone for. Lots of team fight, their SF, their Invoker to kind of stabilize things together. Let's see how it all goes. How do you think both teams as well felt with the, the close up to the draft? You know, obviously Thunder Awaken getting that Bloodseeker carry for Picasso's the last pick, and EG, they, they leave their offlane pick to the last and they get the tie. Do you think that both are pretty happy with this, or do you feel one of the sides was maybe a bit sort of forced into a corner with the last pick? <laughs> Not sure, honestly. I, I think Thunder is probably pretty happy because their lineup is all about aggression and Bloodseeker thrives off of the four heroes before that, right? Everyone's going to be spamming spells. Heroes are going to be low, so Bloodseeker could have a really good advantage. And I heard the panel saying, you know, a lot of the game could be perhaps how this Tidehunter's lane goes. If Bloodseeker is constantly thirsted up from all the spam and everything, maybe that lane could get, maybe could get a little rough. We'll see, because CM has been seen to be one of those really aggressive heroes. Trying to start things off there with a stun into the Rays, but a few quick with the Avalanche. Be able to hold back the two of them. Now, let's see how this top lane goes too, right? The double melee into that Sven Shadow Fiend could be a bit problematic. These Pangos, been seeing it more and more in the off lane, but still, it's not the strongest of lanes. Panda will get zoned away. I see indeed how well Crick can keep this bottom lane safe for Nightfall. Or if Thunder Awaken will be able to pressure the tide here in the early stages. He is at his weakest. I think the, the Silencer should be able to deter the Bloodseeker and the CM from putting on too much pressure. The constant Arcane Curse is really problematic. Especially for that CM, you don't want to really tick yourself down and get killed in these type of lanes. Of course, top lane, Arteezy on the Shadow Fiend, something that looked fantastic from him. Time and time again in the groups. This game, do you, do you sort of like the overall game plan that Thunder Awaken have gone for to deal with the Arteezy SF? Yeah, to be honest, um, traditionally, even let's go back to old Dota times, like Dota 1, etc. kind of things. Burst damage has always been something that does well, work pretty well versus Shadowfiend. And you look at their lineup, it thrives on burst. So that poke from distance and burst could be something to be able to bring down Arteezy in a lot of situations. And looking at lane manipulation, it's already starting to happen. Thunder, they have to try to pull this lane top because the double melee versus SF, but it will be caught. So unfortunate for them. And as you say about that burst, you know, one of the benefits as well, right? Having that Bloodseeker last pick, the, the spell amp, it's going to be there. So that burst is just going to be at another level uh, that yeah, Arteezy has got to be prepared to deal with and rely on his teammates to bail him out when Thunder Awaken goes straight for the Shadow Fiend in the midst of the team fights. Yeah, and the really important thing really is going to be the lack of BKB piercing disables that are coming on AG at some point, right? Because at some point, Thunder Awaken, this Bloodseeker will have a BKB, and his target priority is going to be either that Invoker or Shadow Fiend. He's going to run at them, and there's no way to stop him unless they have, you know, like a, an Abyssal or, you know, something like that. They catch him out of the fog before that BKB happens. Yeah, so the, the defensive maneuvers they can rely on being sort of the global silence, the Warcry buff. Warcry is going to be a, yeah, one of the bigger ones, at least to protect the Shadow Fiend, of course, versus that Bloodseeker. But we've been seeing them go for it so often. Nobody really getting left too much out of the dust. TRTZ missing some of those last hits because of the creep manipulation, but so far pretty even. A couple of minutes in, and nobody getting too, hit too hard either in the lane stage. No. I love the, I like the response from EG, the uh, Invoker versus that Zeus. I mean, we've seen this so much, these, this Invoker versus those spam heroes in the mid lane, just sustains, he's able to get on them always too. So we'll see what Abed's gonna look to do. I imagine he's gonna look to be pretty active this game. Going for this Quas Wex build. See a bit of a chase down here on the bottom. Frostbite into the blood right. A lot of damage, but for cars, when look to dive under the tower. Matthew will be able to get away. Does get triple A's. Arteezy was waiting for him to try to do some creep pulling. And as we said, this is, you know, now it's going to start getting a little harder for Nightfall until he does get a little bit tankier because the constant spam. See Panda. Does go for the 1 1. Bill. See the confidence as well there from Picard just standing his ground against Nightfall. See if he's going to be able to finish off the kill. He'll look to chase him down. Stick charges there from both sides. 
Close. Pass. They'll get him. First blood here for Thunder Awaken as they take down the tie. I love that they do that when they see he's still got these naked items on him, right? He's just got wands, quellings, no actual stat items besides that. No ring of health either, so they're trying to just take advantage of that early aggression. Nicely done. Yeah, absolutely. Choosing the perfect time to strike there. And crits low mana now, too. So they tried really hard to just deter that kill from happening from using all the silencer spells, but the next time it happens, crit won't be able to deter nearly as well. Gotta be super careful down here, EG. Yeah. See with the pull hit, crit trying to get back control of the lane. Yeah, right now, Thunder Lane's looking pretty solid, all three across the board, farming nicely. The Pango, of course, as we said, this is going to be the harder lane, but he's actually had a better start than the Tide Runner because of these kind of creep manipulations that's been going on. Nightfall will have his Ring of Health finished, now. so it will be a little harder for them to commit on this kill. See again, Panda, maybe setting up to get a bit of a wraparound of crit on Nightfall step up. Nightfall's playing very well as that shield to protect the silencer. And Crit does get a full clarity off, and he does have the Sages, so he's gonna get he's gonna be able to get that double spell combo off. Picasso though, with that early wand, it's put it's paid massive death, massive bonuses for him. Top lane. Cute. Zanning with the Avalanche, toss back on to Fly as well to make sure that Fly's not able to chase Matthew down. Slowing him down. Won't be able to close the gap. Good control there. Sacred and Matthew making sure that neither Artesia or Fly could finish off either kill. Feels like next, this power rune that's going to be coming out at 6, someone's going to have to make a rotation for Mago, unless he just wants to go to base. Looks like it's just going to be the choice to go to base. Fill up before that power rune comes out so we can contest with mana. Abed just continuously burning him down. Is your bottom lane? Panda, EG. They're going to look to try and make a move onto the CM here. Chasing Panda down the same time, though. Crit. You've got Picard's going for crit. Panda will go down to Nightfall, but underneath the tower, Picard's will find the tray. Both cores able to chase down the supports, gets, gets each other a kill. Panda will take that one. Anything to enable Picard's. That's the name of the game for Thunder. Yeah, so far, as you can see, both safe laners. 28 and 10 here for Arteezy. 25 and 5 for Picard's. They're putting quite a bit of pressure with this Tidehunter, to be honest with you. Seeing now the six-minute power room coming into play here, and EG, they're going to make sure they have control around this mid-area. They'll look to charge in under the tower. Stick charges at the ready, though. Fly's not able to dive in and finish the kill off. So is EG bringing both supports over towards the, the power rooms here to make sure that they're able to control them against the Zeus. Yeah, Thunder just unable to move the resources to go for that rune there. Mago, very lucky to survive. Has Arcane Boots now finished up. And there's level six, so now EG does have to be careful of that global threat. Absolutely. We saw at the same time with the supports moving mid, Thunder did attempt to make a play on to, towards Nightfall, but at this stage, Nightfall, he's got sort of through the rough part of the laning yeah. stage, and now on his own, he's pretty hard to take down here for these two. Absolutely. The boots, he's able to distance himself as long as he connects the anchor. He's okay versus that Bloodseeker now. So top lane. That Zeus ult is at the ready. See if it's going to be, won't be enough at the moment. Still holding on to it. In fact, the turnaround's just there from EG. Ooh. And they still can't finish him off. They know he has Raindrop. It would not kill him. Bottom lane, Thunder. I'll be able to make a move here with a bit of a buff that Picard was getting. So we'll find Crit in return. But yeah, that top lane, that's a, a very juicy bit of play there for Arteezy with those two kills getting handed to them underneath their own tower. Not what you want to do versus the Arteezy Shadow Fiend so far. This tournament, he's been dominating on it. And we said this was going to be the tough lane to look at for Thunder. Really trying to push the issue to just use that Zeus ult, but not able to quite find it. See here, quick smoke from the mid lane. I'm missing, I think he gets some sort of setup around the mid, see if they can catch Abed by surprise. I mean, Abed, I think Abed knows this happening because uh, Mago was actually nuking from the high ground while smoked. So he didn't see the Zeus and he sees these nukes coming in. So he's like, okay, I gotta be a little careful. He's gonna try and go for the play down bottom instead here. Oh, nice uh, Mago, and with the Avalanche setup, should be a pretty dead crit. So we'll be able to pick up something here. A quick rotation down towards bottom off the back of that smoke. They're bullying him. The three, three deaths already in this game. Just putting all the emphasis on to slowing down that silencer too. Mago, they give him the last hit. Rune will spawn oh, bottom. Oh, it's going to be an arcane as well. Arbed able to grab it. Turns with a cold snap onto Dark Mago, but Panda's here to help out. Fly charges him with the war cry and the storm hammer. Will find the stun connection onto the Zeus. I'll continue to run him down here. We'll see Panda have another slow in a second. Matthew. Further backups coming in, Matthew. Make sure the Dark Margo's gonna be safe. Toss back into the two-man avalanche. 
damage the ult as well. Can Thunder have the damage to finish off even these kills? Arbet turns with the cold snap. He's into the ghost walk. They'll drop a sentry, but he's too far for the rupture. But Kazi's also joined the fight. They'll go straight for immediate TP out oh. though, Arbet, and he is away safely. Fly will get left behind. Picard, of course, he'll charge on forward with the extra help there from Matthew and the Doss. Uh -oh. It's quite a bit of a dive, but they get the job done. Picard, eight minutes in, able to find a kill underneath EG's tier two. And we said the thirst was going to be crazy this game. Eight minutes in, already rotating toward the mid lane. This is the sort of action you love to see. And you, you knew that they were going to go for when Picard comes in with this last big blood seeker. Beautiful rotation, but at the same time, Abed playing it clutch. Such a nice TP there, walking onto the high ground. No disables at the ready. I see him actually come back onto the map on the bottom lane now. Look at okay. the pressure onto this tier one tower. See who tries to, to turn up and soak up some of the golden XP from Thunder down what? here. Wants to get a kill in particular, right? Just wants to get that urn charge so he can start making easier rotations. They just want to pull the attention away from the Shadow Fiend, right? So making the moves bottom, it's going to kind of force rotations from Thunder to make moves down there, probably. But we'll see if Thunder does fall for that. Maybe they will just put, still put the emphasis on Tartizzi. This is a dangerous area of the map. Ravage is at the ready if it's even needed, and doesn't look like it will be just for this kill alone. TPs are coming in, though. Thunder, they want to see if they can find anything in return. Sacred ready with the rolling thunder, gets it off before the Ravage. We'll be able to connect on to all three here with the initial stun. Jump four from Dark Mark, and they get it on to Arb, and then take down the Invoker. Panda will lose his life, but Thunder, to get the kill on the enemy mid, they'll look for crit as well. He's out. Oh, he's not going to be out with a TP. The lightning bolt there in time from Dark Margo. And Thunder, they're not done yet. They're going to look over towards Nightfall. He'll go the they TP, the but bolt. another lightning bolt. Dark Margo just cancelling TPs left, right, and center. Nightfall is going to try and run from this, but a toss four gets Dark Margo in range, finishes off the kill. Thunder, they were more than happy for EG to go looking for that fight round that tier one. They were ready to turn up and they knew they'd be able to get more out of that trade than Evil Geniuses. The second EG steps a little too far into the tower range there, they commit too many spells. Yep, perfect rotation, Sacred comes in. Really nice played. Nicely played from the Pango. And because he was still staying up top, so it's not like he was just leaving the lane totally free for RTZ. He was still kind of like putting a tiny bit of pressure in a way. So really nice rotations coming up from Thunder Wave. <laughs> Yeah, very, very clutch there to, to commit immediately with the Rolling Thunder. We saw how yes. close it was to nearly getting, nearly be getting caught by the Ravage. They don't quite have enough of the damage between these two to go for this kill onto the Bloodseeker. I mean, and Pekazi's playing it smart. He yeah. knows he can't, you know, sort of push his luck too much on that top lane alone. He won't stick around longer than he than he should. EG might struggle to Radiant's find him. Top tower if they have the SF, they absolutely have the damage. Radiant's He's kind of the biggest standing. damage deal that's going to be coming out. Yes, TP's on cooldown with the play that they made down bonus of Picard. What sort of backups are you going to get? It's just going to be the one TP coming in to help out. But the Red Crims there raises from RTZ. Burst him down low and Arbed finishes off the kill. EG, they get in, they get out. I like that he commits the Requiem. Honestly, it's just like, at this point, you're killing the most important core in the game. Don't need to worry about, like, over committing anything. It's exactly how you want to do it, just in case there's TP rotations. Yeah, they're so close at the moment, these two carries in yeah. terms of net worth. Pretty much even, but off the back of that kill, RTZ will now start to, to be able to build that lead. I mean, this game is, it's pretty much dead even across the board here. All the cores, nobody's too far behind. Pango only 600 behind the counterpart of the Tide. See there, it's an incredible win rate. No surprise, of course, yeah. with how well Evil Genius has been doing in the group stage. They've just come out of 100% win rate on the SF. He's going to have to... The thing is, is this game is typical because he has to try to like think when he's going to go for the BKB because of how much magical burst there really is going to be a Thunder Wake. They will be able to get on top of him at some point. As we mentioned earlier, the Bloodseeker BKB, that's going to enable his team to just run at SF run at Arteezy, so we'll see when he opts to go for that BKB. Right now, he's chilling in the jungle farming, not too much pressure onto him. I mean, uh, uh, for Thunder now at this stage, who are they looking to run towards? You know, who, where, where is the, the easiest play to be made? Are you trying to get into the jungle to try and find this Shadow Fiend? Do you look to, to try and bait EG again into a fight around this bottom tier one and react? I think you can fight around the bottom tier one. I don't think you're at too much pressure of like needing to do anything at all right now. Picard's is chilling, he's farming, he has Maelstrom. Zeus is having a great game too. The lanes have gone pretty well for having like this Pango offlane that we've seen sometimes suffer. So I don't think they're forced. If they say EG overcommit, they'll absolutely take the fight. Let's have a look, see if they want to do anything about this tier one defense. Last time it worked out very well for Thunder. And we'll scan it out and you can see this time EG being much more careful with how they put the pressure onto that tower. They'll start to back off for the majority of them. Look over towards the mid. There's Thunder they're looking to trade with the pressure applied here instead. Nicely done. Forcing some reactions, Mago, Invis. Has the Kaya finished up, so 
Lots of bursts. Also, Max Lightning Bolt is done too. So, eyes on the Zeus to really bring down these targets really quick in the fights. And as you mentioned, it's, it really is so much burst. On this team. And straight in they go. They see a chance there to jump fly and fly gone in an instant. Now they really have some of the highest nuke burst heroes in Dota that you can combine all as one as the Ango is getting quite low, but he'll be okay. Still sticking around here. Thunder Awaken there, happy to take another fight. Will be difficult around Nightfall's presence though. He'll yeah. arrive at the tower, has Ravage. He's got, he's got the hook complete. Exactly. He's gonna go for his standard build. You know, he's gonna go for Wraith Pack plus the pipe. The damage mitigation just seems to be. Pretty crucial at this tournament so far. But yeah, as you said, you know, that, that burst damage, it's nothing to laugh at ever in this game. That's why we're mentioning the BKB for SF. Eventually, he has to kind of think about it. She Panda did step up here. We'll drop the ult with a few right clicks from Artiz. He takes him down, and they might see if they can chase for more. They'll look towards the Zeus. Lebride gets laid down, but flies in on top of Damago. They've got the Ravage as well, catching out the two of them. Sacred rolling across, controlling Fly, but Picard has to back away. A bit of over commitment there, getting a bit too aggressive. I was watching from the side here, but with four members of EG, to be in pretty good, in pretty good state right now. It's not a fight that Thunder Awaken will look to step back into quite yet. EG looks like they will, they will respect it though, right? They did commit Ravage. They're going to back up, let themselves just farm. Don't want to risk going into Thunder Awaken's constant spam lineup, going for a tower here this early. How close are we seeing that, that BKB on Picars? It's, you know, it, it, that's, that's going to be the next focus, really, for Thunder. Get this BKB done on the Picars Bloodseeker, and then they'll truly be ready to just go into these fights, and, and Picars will have very little that's going to stop him going for whatever target he exactly. wants. He can just really beeline the Shadow Fiend. It's going to be mostly like the SF and the Invoker in most of these situations. And yeah, we see Arteezy, he understands, you know, BKB is queued up for him, too. It has to happen this game. It's just way too much magical burst. We did see on uh, Matthew. Matthew's actually gone for phase boots this game, so opting to delay his blink dagger a little bit. Does have tumblers, so we'll be able to help him a bit, but... Does mean the initiation for Thunder will be a little bit more difficult in most situations. No real blink stun kind of thing. It's just going to be reacting to EG's first moves. Sacred, I believe he's... Does he have it done? I think he does. Pretty much the Lotus is going to be finished for this Pango. So they'll have options to be able to counter this Silencer as well in this mid-game, which we haven't seen the global yet. See, bottom lane. This time round, EG, they should be able to finish off this tier one tower. They're hesitant, though. He's, he's not going to do it himself. They're still being careful. Let the catapult do it. Never be too sure Radiant when Thunder Awake is ready to bring the fight. Matthew, step forward here. Look at the combo to crit. And with the follow-up of the ult, they'll burst through the silencer. In return, they'll look towards Matthew. They'll try and zoom out of there with the phase boots. That sun strike, not going to hit. Doesn't matter. Fly. Want to finish off the kill. How dare you fly? Artizi's last hit was going to be coming in there. He needs some money. Got to get that shard on time, too. Not really the most value shard, I would say, this game for the Sven, but versus the Bloodseeker, of course, it's going to have that massive benefit, at least for the Shadow Fiend. But besides that, everyone else is just kind of magic damage. So. All right, 800 gold to go. All the BKB on Picars. Still neck and neck, though. This game super close right now. Yeah, BKB is on the two carries. It's going to mean everything for each of them. Will it be enough to protect at least Arteezy? Because as we said, you know, the, the this Bloodseeker will be able to just pierce the back lines to get on top of him. But at the same time, too, looking at Thunder, they don't really have any... They have nothing versus that BKB besides Rupture as well, too. So this will be a pretty explosive team fight when it all kicks off with those BKBs. Both teams look like they are playing a bit careful for the moment. Absolutely, I could, without a doubt, go either way. The first big brawl that we see from these squads, 17 minutes in, 10 to 9, and less than 1,000 gold difference between these two teams. Crit could, crit could just cripple the fights completely too, right? Like, if the, you see the Pango rolling up, you can get the global, you get these Ravages that can come in too to control, so... You see how Thunder Awakens approaches the fight without any initiation. Hey, Matthew! Oh, off the back of the Tornado into the Cold Snap here as he steps up mid. I'll be able to finish him off with the numbers, e.g. Put some pressure onto this tier one tower mid lane, knowing that Thunder Awaken might not to try and bring a full fight here with one of their heroes down. E.g. rallying around that pipe right now, the Tide. They know how strong they are when he's inside of the fights. This magic resistance aura and everything. It is going to be able to counter a lot of that Thunder Burst that we've mentioned. See what Thunder wants to try and make happen here then. You know that Arteezy is not present here for the team fight. That's the four of EG. 
Sacred, they, uh, he's completely open. It's true, he's out one charges as well. Nothing to sort of buff himself back up for the fight. Over to the side, stun into the oh, side as the Ravage as well. They've caught out Picard. Will be able to get the BKB off. Is he able to fight with this? Though? He's turning. Use the Zuso yeah. to try and enable him, get them low, but it's not enough for Picard to be able to completely commit in on this. Sacred charges him with the Rolling Thunder, holds them back. Another connection onto Arbet will finish off the Invoker. EG, they're starting to back off now. They've used their big team fight ultimates. They've just got the Requiem left. Will come out from the high ground, catching onto Matthew with the fear. But Fly goes down. Matthew, he's still alive. Finally gets taken out there. Artis with the last right click. But Thunder Awaken overall, without a doubt, they're going to be very, very happy with how that team fight went. Huge ultimate, long cooldown ultimate used by EG, and it wasn't enough to allow EG to take the team fight. They didn't have the SF there when they're focusing on the Picasso. He is that physical damage. This is a pretty tanky Bloodseeker. The Invoker with the Quaswex, it does not deal as much damage versus this. Oh, we really so saw it there. Saw. I mean, pretty much what the, the stuns. You know, Fly setting up into the Ravage. They get him low, but as you said, getting him low at this stage is not good enough if the SF's not around. BKB from Picard, there's nothing else to really touch him. No, and they barely got the mana too for Sacred, right? We were mentioning how he was Oom. I think he got bottled up from Mago, and then I think he got maybe like Arcane Boot from something else, so... I, yeah, he must have, because I would imagine as well, that's probably something EG were going into that fight having in mind. They were exactly. like, we, we caught the Pango with the EMP, he's not going to have mana to play, but as we saw there, Sacred coming in once again with a huge Rolling Thunder. And that was also Radiant before the SF Austin. had the BKB, so he was being, you know, TZ being a little bit more hesitant how much he does commit into the fights. Now also, so Thunder, after that, Sacred, he's pretty much going to have Blink Dagger, so, you know, we were talking about a little bit of awkwardness perhaps for their initiations. Now, that's going to be pretty clean for Sacred in most situations. Abed starting to fall behind. We'll see around the, the power in. It's just going to be the regen down bottom. Nothing too explosive. Regeneration. Much longer for these cooldowns though. 30 seconds at least on the Ravage. Does feel like Thunder could perhaps go for something pretty soon if they want to. They don't really have any rush as we were mentioning though. Their draft, they're fine with scaling in this game. Especially with how well Picasso is having a time. To the three of EG. Towards the top. Brit and Flight just making sure that RTZ is kept safe at all costs here. Just in case any sort of play was to be made towards him. There's a little awkward feel to go on to this Pango now too. If he sees the stun flying in from the span, he's just going to Lotus Reflect. Also, nice play there from Sacred, hiding his blink in the trees. Trying to make sure that EG is not aware of that one for the next fight. They, they do try and make a move immediately off the back of this pickup, because as you say, it will be into these ultimates from EG. As we did see last time round, that proved to be something that Thunder Awaken didn't have to be too scared about at all. They can still come in with the outplay against the team fight ultimates as long as they're the big cause and the cars doesn't get bursted and Sacred at all costs is just able to get that rolling Thunder off. Look at this vision right now. Thunder has some beautiful vision down there, completely seeing all of EG's movements across the map. Thinking about going for this hit. They're in. There's the ult to set things up. Get the vision. Sacred ready to roll forward. Picard's in trouble. Towards Arteezy. The BKB's off. As Picard is just able to stand his ground against Arteezy. They take him down. As Good. off to the side. Nightfall in trouble as well. Avalanche setting up the blood right. As two dead on EG. EG, what? they've got to run. They do get the sun strike at least for one kill to come back. But beautiful jump. The burst damage. We saw it. Arteezy BKBs, but he's already, what, 30% HP or less? BKB from Picard's rupture gets right on top of him. We're seeing all that burst damage really being a big problem for EG. Absolutely, and as you say, one of, one of the sort of lackings of EG's lineups, just the potential to really to bail the SF out of this yeah. trouble. You know, if Picard gets on top of RTZ, BKB or not, it's not going to be a fun fight for RTZ to stand it. Yeah, look at that. He's 30% yeah, HP immediately, and then his whole team is already having to bail. They can't actually get the They can't initiation. do anything to help him at this stage. Beautiful play, really, by Thunder. And we're going to see that a lot now. When they have the Zeus ult, when they have this Pango constantly, they see everybody when they Zeus ult, Pango gets those initiations. And that's the dream blink reveal. And the last few team fights have been Short chosen second. very, very well here by Thunder Awaken. Starting to build a bit of a lead here against EG. Yeah, and EG, they're not really near any kind of these defensive items for RTZ from the supports, right? They've gone for the Shard on the Sven, and then they've gone for just the Veil on the Sounds here. So no four Staffs, nothing like that to kind of protect them. So. He's going to have to stick around Nightfall for that lifesteal, for that pipe and everything. They have to play these team fights pretty clean scanning. now. Still have the Ravage here. Let's see what they find. Make a move with. They do see Sacred. They do have that ward down. Another up there in the triangle. Sacred 
clearing the wave and playing it safe. Still gonna try and look for the setup. Tornado won't catch, and Zeke will put the shot. But to dodge the EMP and slide out with the swashbuckle. Lotus as well. EG, they can't dive for this. He even holds the Rolling Thunder. That's actually huge. A lot of times you'd see, you know, just a little bit of safe plays just to roll up and Rolling Thunder out. But they can actually go for perhaps taking a fight right after this. Thunder Awakening keeping it very, very cool here. Picard's pretty much having his next start and done Manta. Oh boy. Should be ready for the next team fight. And now he's got the dream, right? That's the always true and tested items versus the silencer. Oh, he's going to be able to prevent everything. Then he just used the Zeus ult to scout, it looks like. Feeling very comfortable now. 3k lead. He's very loving the warding. It's one of the biggest things that I've been seeing, at least from Thunder Awakens this game. Just some clever wards, a little bit different ones, but it's been catching EG off guard. This <laughs> at this stage and for Thunder. Is there really any pressure on them to sort of no. make these moves or are they just waiting for EG to come to that? I think they can they can do kind of what I, I think they're feeling so comfortable with the map. The Zeus is having such free farm almost as Ags. Like these fights for RTZ, they're gonna be complicated. And look, he's actually going for some magic resistance himself on top too, going Mage Slayer, going into just a bit of a different type type of build to survive this burst damage. But it's just gonna get bigger and bigger once the Zeus keeps getting these levels and finishes up his axe, which it's about to be done. Okay, so Matthew Blink Dagger has done it, but now also we see Nightfall, he's changed things up. Looks like EG's getting a bit annoyed of them not having any form of being able to start a fight. So now he's gone for the Blink rather than going for Wraith Pact. I mean, in, in these fights, you know, EG, who, who's sort of your top priority in terms of who you want to be jumping and blowing up? I, I, is it the Panga? Radiance bottom any of the cores. I think if you attack. can just explode one of the cores, you're Dyer's probably off to a good start for this one. Attack. Zeus might... St it's, it's tough to say, really. Zeus is still such a priority in a lot of situations, but you almost will never find him first. Oh, no, sure. Yeah, Dark Margo. Highly likely to be very solid with his positioning. Okay, there's Only smoke. died the once this game. Let's see. They're trying to catch him off guard, hiding the Blink Dagger from Nightfall. What are they going to do? There we go. Nightfall immediately with the jump Ravage to burst through the Zeus. They'll get him. Matthew yeah. tried to come up with the toss back. Won't be able to save him in time. Now with the Rolling Thunder. Sacred attempting to turn this around, but RTZ's in with the BKB. He's beating into Picard. Picard has to back off for now. His own BKB is starting to come to an end. Sacred rolls across our bed, but no follow up damage this time for Thunder Awaken to take anything in return as EG. Good sees of the opportunity there. Can from they... Nightfall, they see that chance to jump, okay. ravage one of the cores, get the Zeus. I was going to say, they have to make something out of this, though. It's a nice kill, but they have to get something else. And into the Roche. Uh, I think they, yeah, they'll, they'll get this very easily here. Nice. Nicely done for them. And that time, this, you know, we just mentioned, you usually don't get caught in the Zeus, but that was the blink reveal. Didn't expect it whatsoever. And a beautiful play, really, from Abed. The Sun Strike to scout before that blink ravage comes out. Nicely done what from EG. We saw, you know, an, an admirable attempt there from Matthew, of course, trying to yeah. with his own blink reveal to get the toss back, potentially save Dark Margo, but too much burst for, from EG. Aegis on RTZ. See what EG is going to be able to set up for next. They don't have a Ravage, but they do still have the safety of the global to fight under. Ooh. Actually finding a little bit of a, an opening here. Matthew is around as well to help, help Sacred out. See the BKBs popped up. It's standing his ground. We'll see an attempt to charge down Fly, but the disarm's already there onto Picard. He has to back off himself. We drop the rupture onto Arbet. BKB from comes to an end. Sacred's going to try and roll in and finish off this kill. A couple of bounces with the Thunder Blood right down. Picard finishes off Arbet. Turn their attention now over towards Nightfall with the damage of Picard's Dark Margo and Sacred. It seems to be a lot. The global silence comes out. Backups here. Arteezy and Fly have turned up as well. Arteezy stepping forward very confidently here, of course, with the BKB and the Aegis. Turns towards Picard, nice. standing his ground against the Blitzing, but Picard tries to run, but Arteezy able to take him down. He keeps trying to go for the SF, but he's got Warcry on him. He's got like 40 armor on this Shadow Fiend every time the Picard runs in. And that's actually because his BKB just came up. He popped it, ran in, and died right afterwards. So now we're at that six second. EG finding their footing. And that was Thunder forcing the fight because they know, you know, Ravage on cooldown. They're trying to persist into something, and they do lose. Their big boy because I think they sort of just underestimated the, the ability for EG to bring in all the members. You know, RTZ able to test the step up. And of course, something that you won't hesitate to do so with this Aegis ready to go. Still three minutes of play on it. Picard was really pushing the limits there too, right? He was sitting 10, 15% HP. BKB was five seconds cooldown, healing off creeps. Tries to reinitiate, but yeah, just 
can't really disregard how tanky the SF is from the Warcry. So uh, as well, that sort of initial struggle for Picard's having to deal with that long disarm. Mm -hmm. He gets caught by... Even though they're able to find Arbed, see from this part of the fight, Arteezy knows that there's action to be had. Able to walk over, join the rest of his team, and make sure that Thunder just weren't able to, to stick around in this triangle. Couldn't make anything more. Just look how risky, though, what Picard is doing there, right? Like, just really depending on all the damage. Quick they moves do, as but... well from EG. They've got the Ravage back up there, immediately smoking up into the triangle of Thunder Awaken. Looks like Thunder Awaken are pretty aware. They're, they're backing off. They have the Wraith Pact now, too, so this team fight could be a lot more complicated. The burst and everything from Thunder is no longer nearly as effective versus Mage Slayer, versus Wraith Pact, versus Pipe. EG's got a lot of ways to just protect their cores now. You can see here, Thunder, no intentions of stepping up into this triangle. They know that this area would be incredibly deadly with yeah. EG in position. Aegis as well as all those ults being up. And also, Arteezy, they don't know this, but he's now hit level 20. So a big peak timing for the SF. Massive damage increase. And I think he also does have... Yeah, he does actually have the full Bloodthorn as well. Uh, this is... Uh-oh. He hits hard. Oh, yeah. And with these sort of decreasing durations of BKBs, as soon as that BKB comes to an end, they have to get out of the fight here, for cars in particular. He's used that BKB in Manta. They're able to catch him with any sort of stun. The amp up at the Bloodthorn. This Bloodseeker is going to get destroyed by the SF. Yeah, now, now also you have to watch out for your Zeus, your Pango, etc. If the SF's able to get on them, he can actually just clear them out on his own very easy. Threatening with this assault. See the SF. Arteezy the only one really showing. Yeah, I think they did see the pipe aura actually on him though, so I think they did know that the rest of EG was in the area. EG definitely still trying to see if they can make something happen with this last minute. The Aegis on Arteezy. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're kind of like controlling the map and constricting a little bit, right? Preventing this Bloodseeker from going for the triangle. So just making sure that they are restricting a bit of that farm. But Thunder's still not really like losing out on the farm much, right? Still lingering between that one to two K gold lead. But EG wants the fight. Radiance now they have a blink also on the Invoker. So for Abed, easier positioning for him. Either to buff up Arteezy or to get these disarms and control. Do you think there's an opportunity for Thunder Awaken to try and look to force a fight? You know, it, in conjunction with the ending of this Aegis? I, knowing Radiance them, that's tower. kind of their style. Yeah. So let's see if they want to try it. It's still very difficult. Because we look. mentioned, there's a ton of damage mitigation that's coming out on EG. They're, they're very much ready to go. Matthew stepping up. Let's see what they find. It's the jump. Matthew in with the Avalanche Toss combo. Bursting fly down low. Roll forward for Sacred. He's going to look to try and chase down the Sven. Flying Crit getting forced out of the fight here as Thunder run down the two supports. Fly goes down. Crit as well looking to be in a fair bit of trouble as Thunder now immediately take out the two supports. The cause of EG nowhere to be seen. They'll back out. They'll completely get themselves out of this fight. They don't want to have any part of this. Fully ditch the supports, right? Like the Globals popped and all three cores just go they nowhere bailed. near to help Radiant's them. So. Top tower is under attack. We'll get some push going in the top lane though. Abed, he kind of stuck around there. Does have the double forge there to hit the tower a little. We'll get answered. And yeah, in typical Thunder Awakens faction, they're gonna look for those fights, you know? That's that's this team in a nutshell. Constant aggression. And now they also do have Sacred with his own Wraith Pack, so damage mitigation versus damage mitigation. I would say overall though, EG, they have a little bit of an easier way to kill that Wraith Pact with that you know, Invoker SF, they can easily target it. On the side of Thunder Awakens, killing Wraith Pack in fights is not gonna be the easiest thing. Not for sure, sort of the... And their only sort of fast hitter is the Bloodseeker. And yeah, he doesn't want to waste he, time. He, indeed, he doesn't want to spend moments on, on hitting the Wraith Pact in the midst of a team fight. They'll need the CM level, tw uh, level 20 at some point. See Matthew. Get chased down here. Bloodthorn into place. See how much damage comes through as a few of those hits come in. Same time, Sacred's in with the ult. Over towards RTG. RTG pops the BKB. Sacred. That's to be into Sacred as Sacred has to roll away. Will manage to survive. That was kind of their big go right now. Ravage still available for EG. Thunder has to be careful. Yeah, they're just having a lot of difficulty with this SF, and he's soon approaching that Satanic, too, so... Yeah, he's gonna be huge. If they don't burst through Arteezy, he's gonna be back up to full HP. They gotta try to isolate him somehow, or just get the grab on him first. Let's have a look at They're going again. I mean, this is in ty typical Thunder fashion. They do have the Zeus ult at the ready. Pango ult in about 30. Don't have to end the way there. Yeah, they do now. The global silence also back up. So EG ready with their ultimates to respond. Mm -hmm. 
It has to be a very, very clean jump from Thunder Awakening and a quick one as well. They're still being cautious. 45 seconds on Arteezy's BKB, so he's pretty much just sitting in the base. If he gets caught, get caught. If he gets caught from the tiny, he's kind of just dead. So. Scanning. Nice attempted smoke there from Thunder, but EG very well aware. EG know exactly what's up. Incredibly hard for Thunder to, to sort of find a way to get in on top of this lineup when EG is grouped up as much as they are. Still keeping that gold lead though. The golden experience lead they've constantly had at this game. But the net, you know, that win probability is just that even. We've seen it throughout the whole game. The battles back and forth. Some good aggressive vision though. Thunder, when they did go for that swoop, did put down some wards. EG probably well aware of that area, so they're not gonna go near their triangle for the moment. An EG. I don't feel any reason to try and force anything until the Satanic is done with how close it is here for RTZ. This is a cool uh, next item queued up there from Picaz. You really understand why, of course. Just the blink, no swift blink. He just wants to jump onto RTZ and kill him, right? That's going to be the name of the game for him. Well, let's see if he does have that damage. As we keep saying, you know, the Warcry, it's nothing to ever laugh about. For sure. And it gets stronger if the Satanic gets levels. Let's see. See how much they want to try and commit in onto this as the rest of Thunder Awaken pretty far back away from this leading from Sacred. And he'll opt for the TP out. Okay. They weren't looking to do anything too crazy here this time, Thunder. I believe they also did see that Shadow Fiend Satanic now too. Roche is back up. It's a shard available. Gonna be a nice free one there for RTZ. We'll spot this out. The Nimbus. Now I'm trying to head over towards the pit. There's no roll, there's no rolling thunder, there's no Zusol. It's gonna be very hard to contest this. Will Thunder still try and give it a shot as Roshan is very low, but they'll put the global EG, make sure they keep the area covered, and indeed without their own ults, Thunder Awaken not able to contest this. EG playing very smart with how they just pick and choose their battles here. Even though that gold lead, as we said, for Thunder has been there, EG continues to get this Roshan advantage from their incredible Roshan lineup, of course. But. So yeah, actually, Picard's as well, changing it up. Looks to it. amp up the damage, go for the Silver Edge. Okay, cool. Look at the toss back here onto Nightfall in the mid. Will force him to use the Ravage, catches onto the four, but of course he's far away from the rest of EG. Picard charges in, they'll be able to take Nightfall down. Now they'll look over towards Arteezy, of course Arteezy with the Aegis and the BKB. Will stand his ground here, punch back at the Picard. Picard has to keep his distance, he's pretty much one hit away from dying. Arbet tries to catch with the Tornado, but the BKB is still on in time to keep Picard safe. Underneath the tower, Sacred charges forward with the Rolling Thunder. They've taken out Crit as well. Jump forward from Matthew Thunder, Perfect. they're ready to look for more. They've got the Frostbite to fly. Requiem from RTZ trying to keep the space here to keep the rest of EG safe, but Thunder, they still continue to poke here underneath the tier 2 tower. Frostbite from Panda, another jump from Sacred in with a shield crash. Matthew looking for the ramp right on towards RTZ. RTZ turns towards Sacred. Sacred, he's still alive! He's finally still died! The last hit there from RTZ takes him out for Picard. He's gonna go back in. He believes in the bash. Gets to the BG. Bash and puts the blade active as well to hold back RTZ, but now the buybacks are coming out. Crits in. Back into the fight. Wants to make sure that Thunder Awaken don't poke for anything more. Thunder Awaken, they'll back off. Thunder. They certainly shook EG up quite a bit there underneath that tier two fox. I mean, Matthew, right? These tossbacks just kind of putting EG in a position where they're like, wait, what's happening? Why are these fights going on? The poke and prod from Thunder, beautifully done. I mean, it, it really is with this team. You know, just when you think they've had enough from the fight, they go for that Let's extra bit more. Yeah, I mean, Matthew is really quite dangerous. We've seen why this tiny is so prominent, especially in the SA region. Even when this hero started to falter a lot, SA was still all over, and we always do see why. Yeah, just EG's like trying to position themselves to not get hit from this, but it's just beautiful from Thunder to just get this, literally just completely zone them on the outside and get that constant spam. And it really was just sort of toss back after toss back yeah. from Matthew. Started with the play onto Nightfall, catches out Fly, and then here behind the tower, another toss back, and Fly once again, oh, sorry, crit before Fly. An incredible fight there from Thunder Awaken that EG definitely weren't expecting. They were not ready for Thunder to come at them that hard at this stage. Yeah, and it's a huge gold injection too, right? For Pakaz, he just had bought the Chrysalis. Now he has a 3,500 gold, so can choose to what he goes for here. And just sort of the, the heads of realization that they could go for that move. You know, something that you yep. won't see a lot of teams go into in these sort of fights underneath a tier two against a squad that's just picked up an Aegis. Thunder always will. They will always go for those fights. If they see an opportunity for these type of plays, absolutely. E-Blade done for the Zeus. Even more damage, ways to protect himself as well. 
And now let's look at for these items, of course, since we are now 37 minutes. We always talk about this tier four items versus the silencer. Of course, a lot of them are going to be there to the dispel. He might look to start something off, he's in on oh, a crit straight with the Invisible Blade, eliminates the Silencer. Ruptures Rupture. well to Arbed. He has got the BKB, but not a lot else to help him. Bash is there from Picard, he's a double, and they're not done yet. They're ready to look for more fly, trying to set up the fight in return with Nightfall. And got Arteezy coming up, looking towards Matthew, but Matthew's able to charge away. Picard blocks the man to get back up the high ground. Each and everybody's careful, Arteezy's already used the BKB. It's coming to an end, Sacred rolls forward, blink forward, over towards Fly and Nightfall. Picard's focusing down the tide, just beating through Easy, lucky to get away there. Oh Able to God. TP away in the last moment. But four dead on EG yet again, two times now. During this Aegis that RTZ has, where EG is a squad, they're not prepared for these fights that Thunder's bringing against them. These guys are just way too damn good at team fighting, really. They're just dancing around EG. And the way they just get the initiation too, it's it's Pakaz who starts the fight, right? The Bloodseeker running in with the Zeus ult, takes out the support quick, gets Ahmed right after. RTZ? Uh oh, he shows himself. Uh, this is a risky bit of a, a move here from him under his, his own tier two for sure, but we saw what happened around the tier two mid last time. Here comes Pakaz. This is not a place that Thunder is scared to go. As uh -oh. Arteezy, that's going to be the Aegis gone, surely. He'll put the Satanic, but immediately thrown up in the air with the Yules. That's the Aegis gone. He's got back up now, though, so Thunder. So back up for a second. I will wait to see how far they back up, though, because all knowing Thunder, they could just jump back in, but no, they'll wait. Oh, and oh, a big pick up. What's on this relic? Oh, and a lovely one as well. That's have for the aura on the team as well. Telescope as well, find, found by Sacred. I uh, Thunder is getting blessed with some of these items. They've got the items to remove the globals. They've got Blast Rick to protect Sacred. And now that Timeless. And yeah, we see there, Pakaz. I mean, he was sort of just in the neighborhood, sort of sees, yep. sees them, you know, crit standing around. And he's like, well, why not? We'll start a team fight these, off here. These fights are getting really awkward, though. You were seeing a few times now, Nightfall is jumping in with like the supports. But he's like, wait, where's our backup of damage? We don't have our SF. Our Invoker had died, and we just blew everything. So Mago is able to reset, and then Thunder is able to take these fights. So I mean, he, yeah, even if they're alive sort of outside of RTZ, I mean, RTZ is the damage yeah. at this stage. O outside of that, nothing too crazy that's going to burst through Thunder. They need RTZ in position, deleting these targets. Something that he can do as an SF, but as we've seen Thunder just poking and prodding, jumping in and out of the fights making it very hard to finish the, the, the kills. I mean, countless times we've seen like Picard running in, running out on minimal HP yep. and making the perfect call of when to head back in, despite how low he may get. It, it really feels like he needs like he needs a blink dagger to be able to have that follow up for the Ravage. And he is, you know, that is going to be the natural build up for the SF when he's getting that 25 too. And SF level 24, just about to hit 25. We did see Picard hit 25 in last fight with two ruptures. Oh, say him. He's into the tree no with way. the swashbuckle. The bash is there. And Arteezy's TP is going to be put to an end. He's being ruptured. Is there anything they can do to save him? He'll put the red green, but sacred back across again with the rolling thunder. The rest of the back of EG's hit because Arteezy is so incredibly low. Jump Global. forward. Global side is there. It's return. Arteezy turns, takes out Matthew. They look towards sacred. Sacred's out with the swashbuckle. There'll be a buyback straight away from Matthew. As thunder. They want to continue to pressure EG here. You see how scared EG is having to run right away from thunder. Oh. I cannot believe he gets out there, though. Great global from Crit to kind of cover the bases. And that certainly could have gone a whole lot worse there for EG. Yeah. Definitely was a scary moment there for Arteezy, though, when he gets clipped in the tree line by that swashbuckle bash. And BKB is still going to be on cooldown for him for 50 seconds. EG is smoked, but Thunder could look for him as well without that BKB. Look at Matthew. Same. See in the river. Jump forward onto Sacred. They're trying to burst through him. Arbet has got the Hex out. Ravage as well. They're locking down Picard. Have they got enough burst to finish him off? It's so no, close. Back to the BKB. Picard, he's out of there. Start the heal up on the creeps. You know this man. He's going to be ready to go back in. He's looking over towards Arbet. Arbet caught by the side. Swatch Buckle. Shield crash from Sacred. They take out Arbet. They take out Fly. Maybe they can find more here in the trees. Nightfall trying to hide, but Picard, he's on top of the top of the shot. Picard's going to burst down, but he's going to hit. How is he alive? Picard will survive. They're ready to keep going once again here. Thunder Awaken as RTZ crit the last two left behind it for oh EG. RTZ's down. Crit as well. It's a team wipe. They just can't deal with them, folks. They cannot deal with them. Thunder, the calls, the shot calling, the team fights they choose to take. It couldn't be done any better. Oh, and they are just way too damn good at taking these fights. Just dancing around over and over again, too. We see the Ravages are coming out, but where's the RTZ damage? Abed had it there. He had the Chaos Meteor with the 20 talent. He had the Sun Strike, but because I think he lives, what, with what, 90 HP, 60 HP something? Heals up, gets the full turnaround. Yeah, I mean, this Bloodseeker pick, it's been played to perfection here from Picard.
I mean, the whole team has made it look so good too, right? Matthew, by the way, Matthew is zero and eight this game, but the tiny performance so I mean, far, the impact that he's had. Absolutely, yeah, the KD8 does not show how much he's been doing here for the squad. And, I mean, they're going all in here. I mean, there's no buyback on Arts Easy. 50 seconds without the Shadow Fiend. He's 900 gold short of it. Thunder, they will back off, though. Respect the rest of the respawns coming in from EG. I know they don't need to force it too much. They're 20,000 gold lead. They've been able to clean up the mid set of racks. And they know as long as they can keep playing at the level they've been bringing for the last 20 minutes or so, I mean, these team fights aren't getting any easier for EG. I mean, look at him. Look at Pekaz. They throw everything. Oh, 60 HP. Gets the Manta and runs away. Also, his team, of course, super good on how they bail him out. They all run and lotus him immediately, but... <laughs> Damn, Pekaz, time yeah. and time again, getting out with the skin of his teeth. I'm playing perfectly with it, the, the heal up there. You know, fortunately, that juicy little creep wave there in the mid, allowing him to heal back up to a point that enabled him to get back into the fight, back into the action. And now Sacred, a total menace this game as well. 8, 2, and 14. Oh, he's starting these fights. What are they going to do about this one? Nightfall. Pulled by the rough jump. I mean, it's got to be terrifying for EG. As soon as, if, if you just see one member of Thunder Awaken jump at you, yeah, you've got to be in full defensive mode. Like, you've got to be terrified when you see one of these guys coming at you. Absolutely. I mean, you're really just seeing so many problems, it feels like, for EG now. The lacking of damage, lacking of ways to reset and protect the SF. Thunder, they've kind of broken EG at this point. And all these last, I mean, how many fights in a row has it been that they've won? It feels like they've won like five or six in a row here for Thunder. See what EG can find here. They need to make this fight work. No rolling thunder, 20 seconds. Maybe trying to find something with that. Look at Mago's positioning here. He's going to TP to join his team. If this doesn't chaos. work out, this move from EG, they are going to be in a very painful spot. Look at Panda. They're not already hit. Panda's just waiting in the, in the Roche pit, too. Does have buyback, so he is in a good position to try to break that smoke for his team. Thunder. At the high ground. They see everyone. Sacred. EG, what's the plan now? They see Abed now, too. They know that they see them. It's constant poke. Into the side as well. Nightfall. Fly. They'll look towards Panda. They'll try and go for the easy of the kills. Panda will get burst through. Sacred jumps forward with the roll up. He's in on top of Arts Easy. They've been able to burst Nightfall pretty low here. Again, Sacred with the rolling thunder passes by once more. Eight arc lightning from Darmago. Finishes the kill. There'll be a buyback from Nightfall. Fly's going to get taken out, though. He's also got the buyback available. Commits it immediately. Arteezy, he needs help, and he needs it now. Pops the BKB. Trying to get the off. The Invisible Blade Act is still there from Pagan. Oh. The Ravage from Nightfall. That's going to send the Red Grip. Nightfall, he might just have been able to turn this fight around. No, no it doesn't matter. Matthew still ready to jump back in with the blink. Oh. Three dead on EG, neither of them with buyback available. They don't, they're not letting Arteezy get any attacks off. Either he's getting bashed from Pango Swashbuckles, he's getting Avalanche constantly, he's getting ruptured and put into a different position. I mean, this is just absolutely perfect plays really coming out from Thunder. These team fights, time and time again, they're Actually, barely losing anything. Uh, their chance for a Roshan now. And deservedly so here, 28k gold that we saw. The last few times, EG struggled to make much happen at all with the Aegis. Now that Thunder are the ones to have it here on Pekaz. You can't kill Pekaz once. How are you going to kill him twice? He's also got 6,000 gold to boot. Has the buyback available. I think all the cores now have... Okay, never mind. Mago did spend his gold. And again, they just... They don't have the buybacks yet. RTZ's no. been going full in on the purchases, so 2,000 gold pretty much short of a buyback. They might just be able to end it. I think they probably will do here. Thunder onto the Tier 4s. In the jump four from Matthew, does get caught out by the immediate Hex Sunstrike. Bursts him pretty low, but the space is just being made here for Thunder to take down the tier fours, get on towards the Ancient. EG, is there anything they can do here with the three of them to push them back? I don't nope. think so. GG is called Thunder Awaken. Wow. Turn up in game one of this best of three and take EG down. And they break that Shadow Fiend there, that 100%. It's gone now. They've defeated it. Uh, some absolute confidence there from Thunder already being... Thank you very much, CBS. We're ready here in Singapore for game two of Evil Geniuses versus Thunder Awaken. Fog, what do you sort of uh, read from this, this draft change that we're getting now in this second game? Do you think EG's going to have a bit of a better shot? Or is this, again, one of those situations where at a certain point it could become a little too much for them to deal with? It was a very action-packed game one and a little too action-packed for EG to cope with. I mean, it's, it's Morphling has been a problem a lot of times in this tournament, so it could be one of those games. He does have these matchups. You know, he can turn into the or he can turn into Pango, turn into SF, does have a lot of really good things that he can do as this morph. 
could be a bit scary if it gets to those later stages. EG, I think they want to, you know, do what they've been doing most of the time to this time. Set that pace, set that tempo, get a good early advantage, because their draft, it's very strong around some like, er good early timings. They can fight constantly, not really too cooldown reliant. Sure. Strong lanes. So let's see how Thunder comes out of these lanes this time, because I do think this time it should be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, of course, you know, Thunder's approach with the, the draft, the way they close it up, something that they're very flexible with, of course. Dark Margo on the time, this oh, yeah. co tiny corner core support. It's going to be fantastic from Thunder Awaken. They yeah. do it very, very well in both positions and allows them to end the draft of a lion not something that a lot of other teams will do but definitely gives that extra bit of threat that instant catch instant hex that for heroes like that the pango and the sf could catch them by surprise and once again not the biggest amount of, of sort of defensive capabilities that eg's heroes can offer if they get jumped yeah not till later on until when they, they have like the marcy shard if he perhaps wants to go for something like that to go for some type of saves yeah absolutely so we'll see i'm I'm really curious how to see this line is going to work. I do like seeing it come up more, especially when you're playing into something like Marcy. Having double disables when you have just a damage dealer as well, too, is just always amazing. So, see what Matthew's going to be able to do with Sacred. Let's see, which, how do they actually pair these lanes? Do they actually put Fly with the SF and the Marcy with the Razor? Because that's more than likely what we'd imagine. The see. battle begins. Let's have a look. I mean, we saw, of course, start of last game, I think pretty much up to the 20 minute mark. It's kept very, very close between both teams. When you look at the lane setups this time round, do you think we're going to see a similar story, or is, is there the potential for someone to get heavily harassed out of the lane early on? Um, I, I'm, I'm just not sure how this top lane, it's, it's just the Lion has to be really careful to not get caught at level two, pretty much, from the clockwork, because then he just dies immediately. Besides that, I think actually Thunder should be okay. We'll see how they do bottom. Sometimes this can be a little volatile because Marcy just does so much in laning phase. Even though Morph has ways to break Link, you can pull him back in and stuff like that. So we'll see how that first few waves goes, at least for Bacaz. And um, what about this mid lane matchup? Dark Margo Tiny against Abed's Pango. What do you expect out of this? Mago should do just fine. Abed should be able to get some decent farm, but I think Mago should come out ahead. He's just so comfortable in these matchups. Talking about comfortable, you know, Bacaz this game, Morph Link. I mean, we saw how well he was able to play on the Bloodseeker in terms of just being able to know perfectly the hero's limits. And if you want to play a hero that you can really push to its full potential and, and play around those sort of risky situations, Morphling, uh, this is sort of the next step from the Bloodseeker, right? You know, you've got to be prepared to see him, Picard's juggling around his HP, his, his agility to a perfect balance. Yeah, it, it really is exactly that, right? Those are the two highest volatility heroes when you're just trying to push the limits to stop. So that's set up for the... The kill here, fly with the chase down. Verifier's there from Matthew, but a few more hits of the battery assault will get the job done for EG. First blood for fly. It's a little worried about this one. They actually did it before the level two even comes out for the clock, where they just come in. Almost getting both heroes to sacred. Thankfully for him, TP's to the tower, but they do force them both away. And I imagine this time round, on the bottom lane, unlikely that we, we sort of see Nightfall in a a dangerous position as he was in in the early landing stage in game one. Is, yeah. is this really a lane where Thunder Awaken can look for kills early or is it pretty safe for EG? He should be pretty safe. He just has to be a little bit careful how much he trades when he does have like the link building up, how much the Lich has, how much distance the list has to get, get like multiple nukes off. So lane positioning is going to be important for EG. Of course EG, you can see themselves very much primed and ready to, to try to, to get a kill out of this lane themselves. And they're going to go on for cost right away. Yeah, he has the adaptive level two, so... He's going to take quite a hit on the way out here. Crit trying to block him up. Shifting into nice that strength. Blocks. So we'll manage to survive. Denied. Has to be careful in this lane. Any sort of misplay here or caught out of low HP. Pekaz could get burst down by these two. They've got great ways of sort of getting that damage in from the distance, whether it's Crit throwing themselves in on top of him or the Plasma Field clipping him at the edge of the circle. Yeah, until he has that wave form, it can be a bit of a risk versus those double ways to keep him on that link. The top, top lane. A nice turn around. Fly has got the fairy file, dropped down the cogs, but Sacred, one more hit's all he oh. needs. Ah, he's not going to be able to get it. Oh, the cogs. Fly's able to get out, and now Sacred's got to back away. Mango's at the ready. It's easy, beginning to stack up the raises. Thunder have to keep their distance. They are struggling up here, though. Nine last hits on Sacred. Sure, you see the nine last hits on the Razor as well, too, but he's just constantly sitting like half or below that on the AP. This Clockwork SF lane a lot harder this time around. Absolutely. A very nice duo to play with in the lane. Yep. Bly just being able to 
to charge and get on top of a hero with the battery assault and just oh. providing that control for RTZ to line up the raises. And this is actually a pretty you know, big thing to actually talk about here. So on the retreat there, Fly going back to base gets a half pull. So what this is going to allow is now the wave is going to go back into the tower for the Shadow Fiend. So actually a pretty impactful play coming out from that clock. And this is something extra. Uh, uh, See bottom lane. Despite sort of the, the harassment that EG are applying to Picars, he's still farming safe. Oh, yes. 17 and 7 against Nightfall's 13 and 5. And look at, not even going for the waveform, not even a 3. Just going for 2 points in adaptive. Ah, that's confident. It's, it's cool, too, because now they do have burst damage where maybe Nightfall can die. That's now true. it's a lot of magic damage. Oh, very much so. They've got good follow up as well from Panda. Mm -hmm. So the ability to sort of just be able to slow down EG if they're ever trying to chase this morph, giving Picars the, the space to just simply walk back under the safety of his tower. To top lane. Sacred. Setting up onto Sacred here for Cogs. Okay. Stage the raises, even if they stack up, not quite enough to burst through the high HP of the Dawnbreaker. Nightfall, they're, I mean, they're literally just burning the raindrops. Bottom lane, Nightfall just got his delivered pretty much. It's down to two already. They're just constantly spamming him out, making sure they can potentially go for that type of kill if they do go for an overcommitment with the Link. Yeah, because he's chilling down here. And it's really causing this sort of state of the lane where G not really able to put as much pressure onto the Picard's morph in this early stage as, as maybe as much as they thought they might be able to get away with. Yeah, they definitely wanted to maybe get at least one type of catch onto maybe the Lich or something like that to enable the Razor to shut down this morph a bit. But yeah, because the Falcon Blade's done, he's gonna continue just free farming. We haven't got a chance to look at the mid lane much. He does now, of course, Waveform is picked up at four. And Start they around Panda. They should get Panda here with a rebound stun. Oh, oh it's actually still got the Fairy Fire. And in fact, with that, he will manage to get out alive. Now with the ready as well, Panda able to stick around. Still got two mangoes to play with. Top lane. Set him on to fly with the stun in the hex. He got the battery salt off though. So able to put a stop there for the Star Breaker of Sacred. Fly up to the high ground in time. Last hit, not enough to take him out. And now uh -oh. it's easy. He might be able to line up some kills himself. Looks towards the dawn, Sacred. Might look for a neutral deny, and he's not gonna get it. Arteezy able to get the last hit in in time. Gets the kill before the deny can be found. Little bit of a slip up there, Thunder. They don't get the chain stun to not allow that battery assault. If he doesn't get battery assault, they probably get the kill on the clock, but does get that little mini stun to stop the Starbreaker. Bruins being checked. This first time we actually put any emphasis on mid lane, it's pretty much even. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. 35 to 5 against the 32 and 6. Arbed is going to be very happy with that arcane rune. They've got to be extremely careful on the side lanes as well now, Thunder Awaken. Absolutely. High chance that it could be a Pango turning up and looking to fight. Yeah, and let's see if they put any emphasis to slow down Abed, because you know, let's see what build it's going to be. I think we imagine it's going to be that defusal, but he's got the corrosion done, and that could be one of those things that could cause some problems for the Morphling. That's true. It's an excellent defusal game across the board. Yeah, even versus the Dawn and everything, right? Yeah, low strength HP. Wars, strength, low mana, etc. Low mana. Yep. Uh, big. So, yeah, we do see a move already just to fill up for the bottle since he didn't get the rune. And, oh, I say that. He actually did not get the fill up. He did not have an inventory slot. Whoopsie. Fortunate that he's a, at least full HP, but probably not the best uh, of situations there for Dark Margo. It happens. Yeah, still farming just fine. Phase boots done. Has stacks to work with too. We see Panda backing up and getting some stacks. But right now, 2 0. We can try for, for a play here between the two of them. I like this. Smoke up from the mid, and they're going to head straight towards the top lane. Not before EG's already there themselves, though. Both supports flying crit, ready to start setting up the play. Sacred so will get the hammer out. Able to pull himself away, but RTZ closing in upon him. Back up. He's coming in, and now Dark Margo with the two man avalanche. He's going to look for the toss back, finds it onto Crit. Stunned now from Matthew onto RTZ. They are able to lock down the SF, take out two. Beautiful. And even more hit. Panda still has the slow hit, applied to fly. The backup's in in terms of Arbed. Arbed, see if he can get some kills in return off the back of this rolling thunder. Good angle onto Panda, but there's four heroes yeah, here, and Arbed cannot try and pressure for more. He has to back away, not able to turn around this fight and find anything in return. There. I love Thunder how they play around the understanding of, you know, SF. It's a weak hero in the early game. It's very Arbed. fragile, so able to punish it nice and early. She could actually jump in aggressively around the power in spawn. Will end up being down bottom, DD. So if they can burst through crit for this, they certainly can. Toss back into the stun, Thunder. Gonna take another kill around the river. <laughs> How many times has he tipped crit already in this series? Oh man, great rotations though, as we no, saw. Just, just knowing exactly how to punish this Shadow Fiend, very squishy early, good moves. And how's Sacred? Even getting a good connection under the uh, tower. A bit of damage onto RTZ here. Yeah. 
He'll be fine though. Does have a few one charges, good to go as well. So he'll still remain safe on this top lane. But the fact that they're making these moves, forcing reactions, making crit even go top. Look at Pekaz, he's got the free lane, the free farm, with no attention put on, onto him now. Panda. He's gonna go for the TP out, but the damage from Nightfall ah, underneath ah, his ah, ultimate. Ah, Far too much for Panda to TP out from. Cute little attempt though, he cut the tree, got in the fog for like a quick second there, but yeah, not quite able to survive. Three, three to three, EG with a slight gold lead overall. Nine minutes in. Preparations are being made here in the Triangle of Thunder Awaken. Stacks will begin. Yeah, they're gonna work on those now, it looks like. Perhaps Smago. Gonna be nicely enabled from these stacks, honestly. The phase boots this early done with the blinks gonna be done probably within the next like three, four minutes too. And that's gonna apply tons of pressure. These squishy heroes, I and mean, look at all of the heroes on the side of EG. The three cores, all agi cores. So strength gain, kind of minimal. So could definitely see Dark Mago have a pretty explosive game. Absolutely, and, and especially when you, you consider the lineup that he has around him, right? Everybody's got a fair bit of damage to, to throw into the combo. It feels like that's just the Thunder style, right? We saw last game, tons of nukes on every single hero. This time it's very similar. Not bad. Just a step up. Got the solar. With the hex into the stun, he's dead. Oh, a man, quick maybe. catch there from Thunder as Arbed not prepared for that move at all, or maybe feeling that Crit would somehow be able to bail him out, but of course no options were there for Crit to be able to save Arbed. Thunder, they'll now step up for more fly, stepped into the river. They'll pick up oh. both kills. And at the same time, bottom lane is actually Picard that's, that's draining Nightfall. And with the static link and the adaptive strike, Nightfall is so, 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 so close to dying here. Not quite. The mana. He's going to have plasma field in a second. The man is putting up Picard. Oh, oh my god! And it's not enough to kill him. He's still trying to push up, but the TPs are coming in. Picard, he gave it his best shot. Oh. He nearly gets it there, but he won't. <laughs> EG able to punish him. I mean, he. What a play. He was going to go for that kill in every possible universe there could ever be. I mean, that's still so nice because of Nightfall. Like, he actually rebought his raindrop charges earlier, and that's actually the thing that allows him to live because of this overchase. Raindrop protects from that plasma field. All the little things. Pakaz tries to push the limit, gets punished. I'm sure he'll be selling his team space made in oh, yeah. mid tier one tower. Only taking a fair bit of damage from Thunder Awaken. Yeah, he's like Zeus, ult, please. Mago, though, as we said, got that double kill. Probably the most important thing to talk about. That blink's going to be coming out super fast. And yeah, very fragile cores on the side of EG until they start yeah, getting some HP items. That really is the thing. You know, how prepared will EG be to deal with this early blink dagger? Yeah, I mean, Nightfall's going to have to be the one to kind of stand as the frontliner as this Razor, as we've seen many times. But he's not having the best of games as this offlane Razor. Twenty seconds and Sacred will be ready to back up any sort of move they make around the map and Thunder's deep ready. in sync with that they'll look to make the, the smoke play. They've Good got to set up. They've got more than enough burst for they, anybody. They've got all the ults. I mean top lane. EG, smart move from them to get aggressive onto Sacred. He's the one that provides the global backup. If they take him out, there's nobody that's able to bail him out. Nightfall knows he's like, wait a minute, nobody reacted top. Oh god. And he knows he's going down here. Yeah, they'll throw out the ults. I see Matthew. Holding back the finger. Wants to make sure that he's got that at the ready. No need to farm unnecessary stacks at this stage. It's a long cooldown level one. You make sure you have that for the next kill. They could look to actually make the move again, and Dawnbreaker respawning can TP somewhere and Solar Guardian into the next team fight. Absolutely, yeah. So. You know, saving the finger for the next kill. Matthew, yep. he's, he's very ready to go. We'll see, in fact, TPing up towards the top. He TP Thun Matthew actually TP'd mid. They saw Abed. Oh, mid, sorry, yeah. Second. Oh. Matthew coming out towards the mid. Sacred will he'll, he'll be the one to head back top, continue to clear out the waves. Matthew TP pretty much like from the, the hard camp near the outpost to the mid lane, just really trying to kick up that pressure, have a very quick paced early game. Even again, just like the last game, after lanes, things are looking at this is dead. We'll Locked see if out. this catches out Sacred Academy once more. EG, they know at this stage you make the moves towards the door. That's the, the cleanest thing they can do. Mid lane, Dark Margo will indeed find the jump. On to the Marcy. Again, at the same time, the moves made onto Sacred. TPs will come in this time round, and Sacred okay. able to pull himself back to the safety of the rest of his team with the hammer. EG not successfully able to take down the Dawn this time round. He's not an easy kill. I mean, look at this. Look at this Dawn with the Falcon Blade with the Bracer, 1600 HP. They have to commit so much. If he just gets the hammer out every time, they don't have that follow-up disable. 
And now, Matthew, as we said, still holding on to that finger. It feels like he just wants to use it on Arteezy exclusively. Radiance Absolutely, yeah, he's, he's being very controlled with this. And it, it definitely hurts, Freaky. They know that that threat of the burst okay, will be top. there. They're going to try for Sacred once again. This time, Sacred a little further up than before. Got the hammer. To get the hammer out. The cogs are down. Has the backup of Matthew and Panda. Chain Frost is there. Fly. Hook shots out. They're taking out Sacred. This okay. time, Matthew. No ready to burst through. Fly with that finger. Finish him off. Arbed will turn up from the side to make sure they get a second. But Don is in with the bling. And buyback. here's the buyback. Dawnbreaker. Sacred ready to fly over towards the fight and turn this around. As it's a double kill for Matthew. Crit tries to run. The tree will chase him. A sacred ready to dive in underneath this tier one tower. Crit trying his best with the Dukes. Oh, I'm I, not doing a bad job about it at go. all. Oh, they see him now. They do indeed. He can only hide there for so long as Thunder take him down. Thunder. And now take out the tier one. A solid buyback there from Sacred. I mean, Thunder is really on some next level stuff. We saw this in the last game too, just constantly looking for the fights. EG probably was like, oh, we're good, you know? He's dead. He's not coming back. Who buys back in 14 minutes like this? Great play again coming out, Thunder. Really understanding how to take these fights. Now, once again, as in game one, still overall close between yep. the two teams and both carries in a very similar spot. Cars and Arteezy but within a few hundred gold of one another. But seeing this Morphling having this type of game is definitely some concerns for EG. As the panel mentioned, sure, they've got this Rolling Thunder, they've got the Marcy Stun and stuff, but they don't really have like these silences. Morphling will be able to always survive, probably versus the Burst. And he does have that matchup. I mean, turning into Pango, turning into Razor, he's got a lot of different things that he can do here on this Morph. So EG, these next few moments feel like they're pretty crucial. Abed, the fusal is done. Let's see if they can actually find a kill here. This could be what allows them to get me. Cars would be the big one. Very quick with the waveform fly, not able to catch him with a hook shot in time. Does have Sacred around. They're on the mana though, we'll try and swing forward with the Celestial Hammer and indeed EG, they won't continue to chase. They know it's highly likely that Picaz has got more backup behind him. As Picard's able to get away from that smoke, EG not quite able to execute that initiation as they wished for. No, they're, they're trying to find the moves, but yeah, just as we said, the morph is going to be a big problem for them to ever try to kill. And now Hookshot on cooldown, and that was also the defusal reveal, I believe, for Abed. So, Thunder will be well aware of it, and imme immediately look at them. Like, the smoke is already going. They already see an opportunity to go for a kill. They have this ward bottom. Finger not at the ready. Might need a one, might need one more follow up. They do have the Solar Guardian if they want to call for it. And Nightfall does show. Yep, they know he's in it. Dark Margo. Yeah, they're going to use it. Able to get him with a jump. And of course, once they get that opening stun, so much follow up to make sure there's more than enough time to keep them in position, allow Sacred to connect with the ultimate and get whatever pick off they look for here. It's so fast the way they're moving. It's, it feels like they're just constantly smoking and just swinging across the map. Just first they were top, now they're bottom within like two minutes afterwards. EG trying to get back them, trying to find the cars. So well, they can get underneath this tower. I mean, they know that there's no Dawnbreaker able to head over and help out Picard. But Panda, he walks in. He did see that ward, it looked like, for a quick second. They're gonna go for him. See if Thunder want to do anything about this. They will take a bit of time to take Panda down. He's still In fact, alive. if they can take him down at all, they can't. Panda able to walk away. Thunder, <laughs> they'll happily take the fight that EG try and poke for us once again. EG attempting to make these moves, but just not quite able to, to get that catch on to Thunder as they wish for. Thunder is just, they're reading the map better, honestly. The macro play so far has been perfect. We Just like last game too, the wards that they've set up, it seems to just be doing every little thing and just keeping Thunder in a perfect position, not even losing their five. And we're seeing the skill build from Picard. This is, you know, we've seen this so much now from the morphs. You only need that two points in your attribute shift. So he is very scary if he turns up and fights. A ton of burst damage from Waveform and from the Adaptives early. I mean, do you imagine that EG wants this BKB is done on Nightfall? Will they look to to try and look, force a fight? So top lane, Matthew. He's getting gone on, but Picard's thinking about maybe trying to find something themselves out of this. Dark Margo's in with a jump. He's able to close the gap on Artini. He just oh burst boy. straight through him. Able to jump straight over towards Artur at the back of the fight. Throwing out the tips as well. That is massive cause for concern. I mean, he's able to just uh, one-shot him. Look, I mean, how, just, look how huge his tiny is. He's got an Echo Save and the Brigand's Blade. Oh, it's yeah. so much damage from the combo once he gets on top of them. And as we said, you know, the EG lineup, it's it's very fragile. Nightfall, as you mentioned, you know, the BKB, they're going to have to try to force something big with it. Some type of fights, because things, even though it's a, only a 1k gold lead for Thunder, it feels like it's starting to get quite a lot higher than that. 
See here, again, to Amargo. Able to come in from the river, get the catch onto Arbet, toss back into the hex, the fingers of the ready, Arbet gets burst. They are just, the, the synergy on this team is insane right now. The toss, every single time, toss back into like a follow-up stun from either the Dawn or the Lion. Yeah, everything going their way. EG, kind of crumbling right now. And it's, even when they have the BKB on Nightfall, I don't know, forcing a full fight might still be difficult. Arteezy's just dead if he walks into a fight, it feels like, so. Maybe for Nightfall, they can go look for some type of expedition with three heroes or four heroes and leave hard. SF away, but I think going for a full team fight might be a disaster for Arteezy. Absolutely. He's, he's gonna want to have no part of any fight until his own BKB's yeah. done, Arteezy. Still a bit of time until that will be out for him. Okay, Thunder, they're starting to feel very comfortable. You know, they made all these early moves. Now they're like, okay, I think we have a pretty damn good advantage right now. Sit back, finish up an item. I think they have the Matthew Blink Dagger also done, so they can even look to make these moves if EG does step out of position pretty easily while they're just farming. And they've got the global threat, so things are really looking quite amazing right now for Thunder. And they will actually also have a carrier of that Wraith Pact, as we've seen Sacred do this in most of his games on his Dawn. He's got the Vlads, he's gonna be going for that. EG, they do not have that this time around. It's gonna be Crit who's trying to opt for it, but it's gonna take him a lot longer. So that damage mitigation will cause problems. It'll cause already a Manta now too. Abed, very close to having the Blink, should have it ready for the next fight. So a chance for, for him to maybe get in and, and get that opening stun. So you're able to walk the river, and we'll get the pushback onto Sacred. Separated from the rest of us, seen by the Cogs, but the Chain Frost is out. They're and Arteezy. Arteezy. goes in with a jump, finds Arteezy in the river. Arteezy not able to get off a single spell as the Shadow Fiend falls. You see Nightfall have to just offer a BKB TP out of it. Oh, and there... No fight to be had. This is around the Roshan Thunder. They can look for this. I mean, we were saying it. RTZ, there's, he, there's just no place himself. for him around these points of the map. No he way. cannot turn up like this. He needs the BKB. We've seen every single time. If Dark Margo even catches a whiff of this SF showing up, yep. he's on top of him every single time. I'm, I'm a that was like Save Your Buddy Syndrome. Let's see, Abed. Abed. He's going to try and go for the steal here. Roshan not quite low enough for Arbet to finish off himself. He's going to have to go He's for the TPL. He nearly does die during the Rolling Thunder. He'll be able to bail out in time. But not able to find the interruption around the pit that he hoped for. Thunder Awaken, they get the kill, they get the Aegis on Picard. EG have to just, they have to get the SF BKB to have any type of chance. I'm, I'm still just astonished that he showed up there. It's Nightfall. Bottom. They're going for him. They made the jump. They know that the BKB here for Nightfall on cooldown. Finger at the ready. Nightfall, he's got the stick charges, the static links, but there's nowhere to run. Picard finishes him off with the adaptive strike. 18 to 8. It just feels like all over the place for the last 10 minutes. It's just been Thunder making every single move successfully. EG, that BKB still not finished up. And look at Thunder, they're ready to go for more. Into the triangle here, Crip. Tries to turn us down his ground with the ultimate. Might be able to get him with the stun for the rebound. Matthew able to line up the two-man stun here in return. Catches both supports out. Two more dead on EG. Uh, there's Taker just runs in. Frost Shield drops Wraith back. He's good to go. EG fully crumbling right now. Thunder just taking advantage of every single one of these moves. And still looking to play aggressive. Look at Mago chilling in the enemy jungle. Pakaz on the bottom side. There's nowhere for EG to go. It's so difficult for EG in this sort of position. I mean, this is the thing as well. Even when the BKB's done for Arteezy, with the kind of lineup that Thunder have and the way that they play, you, you've got to be so ready to press it, right? There's so many ways to bait it out or indeed just catch him before he even gets a chance to react. Yeah, he, there's a very high chance he won't even get off. And even if he does get it off, now at this point, do they even have damage? Does, is their lineup actually going to be able to do anything with these BKBs? Or are they just going to use these BKBs to stall out a long inevitable death? There we go. The BKB is there for Arteezy, but the same to be said for Dark Margo. He's going to have even less fear, if that's even possible. He's just in. There he is. Some of the jump Nightfall immediately pops the BKB. They're just terrified of EG. There's the jump no, no, He's able to find the Hex onto one season. The stun follow up. A perfect jump there from Thunder. Causes the death of Artor behind the tier twos. Once again, Thunder's favorite place to fight. As Crypt falls, three dead on EG. They're, They're ready to go past the tier four. Dark Margo in with the Avalanche. Four oh, dead oh, oh. on Evil Geniuses. As it's just too much for them, Fog. They are just feeling themselves fully. That, uh, yeah, last 13 minutes, it's all theirs. Even since the last game, it's been all theirs too. EG, it's starting to feel like they don't really have much gas left. I mean, Thunder, they're going to keep this going. They've still got 
Over two minutes left on the ages here for Picard. I mean, look at this. You, like you said, they see RTZ, they just immediately jump him. I mean, watch Matthew. See you later. He knows that's all he needs to do at this stage. He gets that opening hex. And suddenly, there's no way, nothing that EG can do to, to provide any sort of time or safety to allow Ortiz to live through that initial disable and get his BKB off. He's just not going to get the shards. Yeah, 9k lead versus this Morphling, who nearly has the Ags done. Like you said, they've got the blink, they've got the BKBs, but it feels it's like terrifying. they've really lost too much I mean, much this is the off. only way that EG can take fights. Even with having the BKB, they have to do it off the back of the smoke. They cannot be the ones getting jumped, because we've seen every single team fight where Thunder's able to have some sort of information They'll always find the opening that they need. But do they have the damage now at this point? With this, when they're this far behind, there's a solar that's guardian do. that's gonna come in. Get the opening roll in Thunder. See they all coming in from Sacred. They didn't have enough damage. Darmago only gets burst down to half HP. Uh -oh. He's ready to put the BKB turn. Take down Crit. Hook shot there from Fly, but the heavy hits here from Thunder. Take him down as well. Stun Hex locked down onto Harbeck. Three dead on EG. They want more. And Nightfall is up on the cliff. He'll opt for a TPL, same to be said for Artesius. The two cores will manage to escape here with the BKB TP. But again, they're just having to run. They're just having to back away. And this is not what they, they needed to be happening once they had these BKBs come out. They just came a little too late and a few too many fights taken beforehand that just put EG too far behind. It seems impossible now for them to take any sort of fight against Thunder. Yeah, that was them. Like, I think they were trying to take advantage of that Sacred was dead. Maybe they can burst the hero, but he respawned right when they get the jump, has the Solar Guardian, and yeah, Dark Mago's BKB come up, comes up like one second afterwards. He gets it off. Because Thunder just yeah, playing to perspe perfection, really. Extra agi and attack speed he's able to take with the Ags. Just tearing through the buildings. Nothing that EG can do to push him back here. You know how they're feeling right now on the side of EG. They're just like, wow, yeah, I don't know if we can ever take another fight. They're going to have to hope that Thunder really just oversteps their balance and kind of throws this one away because it's feeling completely impossible to ever kill this morph or pretty much anyone but Sacred, any of those cores except for that Dawnbreaker. Cars just so far ahead. It's same it to be said for Dark Margo. Both of these cores easily 5k gold ahead of their counterparts at this stage. This early stage as well, just 25 minutes in. And sort of a, a period of, a, of the game that, in terms of the group stage performances, EG, they've been reveling in the, the earlier wins. But Thunder very much showing that they have the ability to shut down EG so early that EG just can't get that footing, can't get that momentum. It's enabled them to pop off as they have been in the group stage. And EG did get the first blood that they've been like looking for, I think. I know in this game, I don't remember the last one. Bottom map, you hit him. He's gonna get the two-man set up here. Next is gonna follow up on Nightfall, Sacred. It's pretty beefy, and with the finger burst, on to Fly Fly. He's gonna get taken out, Ahmed dies off to the side again. Nightfall and RTZ, all they can do with their BKBs is BKB and TP out. They cannot fight them. No damage. Now they can't even kill Sacred at this point. They've gotten him in the first few of one of those fights, but yeah, he just drops a raid pack. There's no damage. In terms of sort of fights that they can put together around the defensive on the high ground, do you sort of see any play that EG can try and go for in, in terms uh -oh. of punishing Thunder when they go for the high ground? Matthew? He showed himself. They know he's in the trees somewhere. Matthew's going to go for the blind stun. There's no quite find chase him. him. Dukes are there from Arteezy, but Matthew, he'll still be able to chase him out. Hex is there. They're on top of him with the combo. Tips once again being Give thrown it. the way of Arteezy. Godlike for Picars. And to answer the question of the comeback on the high ground, they don't have the team with the tiny. They don't have these tossback plays or anything. It's looking quite impossible. On to the next Rax. It's going to drop in seconds. 30 seconds without RTZ. 39. Looks to matter too much considering the state of the last few fights we've had. He has the buyback back up. Uh, they just have to watch. Even with RTZ. Ooh, quick link there. Oh, Bev will be able to avoid uh, the catch of Dark Margo this time round. But the top racks, it's gone. They're just too far ahead now. No fights really, it feels like. EG. You said they gotta just hope the Thunder oversteps massively, even a couple times. Just one or two times won't do it. Maybe three throws or something, but yeah, Thunder. Phenomenal play. All game, it's just been relentless aggression. Now for Thunder Awaken, they can look towards that bottom lane. Push forward towards that final tier two, standing. Yeah, they don't. Side of the map. They don't have to really go much of anywhere else now. 
I think the Scotty's about to be finished for Picasso as well. Too. I, he's two, three items ahead of his opponent, his counterpart. And all of EG. It, it feels like they haven't even hit a creep in these last, what, five minutes or something. Definitely feels like they're running out of, of fullback plans. To be able to sort of rectify the, the state of this game. Arteezy can't even finish getting souls. He just has to sit in the tree lines with his team. Because even if he shows, I mean, if he shows himself, he might just die immediately. Look at Matthew. Immediately whips himself. He's like, let's go. Look at the scan, EG. So they know that Thunder Awakens there, but not really too much they can do with that info apart from continue to stay hidden they in the know. tree line. Matthew knows. He's in. Oh, he's in with a jump. Straight away there with a the hex. They burst through Fly Knight. Full pop the BKB in time. Tries to come in with a static link, but Picard is there. Heads in with a wave for takes out Nightfall immediately. Sacred committing in deep. Starbreakers to land on to Artizzi. Artizzi will pop the BKB. Armin's in with a stun on top of the Dawnbreaker, but the finger burst. The hex is there. They lock down Artizzi. The SF will fall. Armin, the only one to get out. GG. As there it is. GG is called wow. Thunder Awaken. Turn up here in the first series of the playoffs here at the International Level to take down EG 2 to 0, knocking them down to the lower bracket. And no. This was a pretty severe knockdown, oh, folks. Yeah. First game was close, very even through the majority of it. This one, Thunder came to play. They knew exactly what EG was going to do, and they did get.